in the early 1970s, we had an all-black tour go to South Africa, which uh, generated some spirited opposition in Wellington in my student days, and uh, uh, there were people, quite a few people, photographing those. Uh, and ten years after that, or thereabouts, uh, we had um, the Springbok tour take place in, in New Zealand. Um, Auckland was specifically or uh, impacted on on its hosting the two matches, um, and uh, I photographed that differently from others. I was using colour slide film. I also carried a tape recorder around and and recorded the ambient sound. Looking at the images, it's really uh, interesting to see from this point in time how the physical landscape of Auckland was so incredibly affected by this event. Um, to enable this tour to go ahead, uh, so many normal uh, aspects of life of Auckland completely disrupted. Um, uh, walls of steel uh, erected around sports grounds with jumbo bins and shipping containers. Um, suburban streets um, filled with barbed wire entanglements and uh, the young kids sort of becoming so used to this sort of playing around uh, with their balls and as if they were in Belfast or somewhere and uh, the graffiti that sprouted up and appeared on walls everywhere so the, the walls of the city were being used as a sort of a canvas to express dissent and um, every, every weekend for the time of the Springbok tour there was always something going on in Auckland um, whether or not um, the games were here uh, because of the tactics of, this, of the anti-tour movement to try and spread and disperse the police strength all centres around the country were staging their own demonstrations and uh, I recall I think on the during the first test in Christchurch, uh, the protest uh, that left from um, the top of Karung Happy Road, I think it may have been, marched up Simon Street and over into Kingsland and then down Bond Street and hopped over, everyone hopped over the fence and marched up the Northwestern Motorway and closed it down. And, um, you know, the police were so busy elsewhere, they were powerless to stop uh, that happening. So. Um, there were other demonstrations that took place outside Hughes and Kossars and Kyber Pass that got quite rough. It was interesting to observe that um, the Springbok tour um, aroused so much um, energy to oppose it, um, being a, an overseas issue. Unlike sort of previous uh, incidences of um, fairly serious internal uh, dissension here, the waterfront lockout of 51, the 1931 depression riots, the 1913 strike. Um, this was an overseas issue that was brought, brought into New Zealand, into Auckland, and had qu quite a major impact on um, on things uh, on things here of race relations. Um, uh, some of the groups, of course, who um, were very prominent in opposing the two were members of the Māori society and um, groups and organisations, and um, they, of course, started challenging the um, protest movement, saying, well, look, you're putting so much of this energy into opposing r uh, racial oppression in a country thousands of miles away, it would be really quite good too for you folks to start looking at our own domestic situation here and, um, and um, in actual fact this did start happening because in 1982, uh, in 1982 the Waitangi, uh, pro Waitangi Day protests um, that year were attended by um, quite a few Pākehā supporters 
Yes, we can also hark back to the Bastion Point um, sort of uh, occupation of 1977-78 um, and the, you know, a unifying uh, feature of that issue is also the, uh, the, the very strong presence of Robert David Muldoon who, in whose electorate that took place. You can see similarities in, you know, in his, his employment of the army, trucks to freight and the drive in the police, the, 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 the uh, use of, massive use of police um, um, manpower in overwhelming numbers to, to confront and encircle and to um, evict the protesters the, and the, using the Ministry of Works to destroy the camp. The dawn raid issue with the, um, the round-up of the uh, um, Pacific Island overstayers uh, uh, also exhibits another propensity of of Muldoon's government to be fairly um, um, uh, harsh on how they try to resolve these sorts of issues. Um, the police were not very discriminating in who they picked up. They were picking up Maori people in some of these, uh, you know, <laughs> some of these. Uh, Exercises. They, they, you know, they, they were getting a bit confused about who, who, which Polynesians they were supposed to be going after, and so the, the, all sorts of people were getting dragged, caught up in this drag net. Um, I think what they, end, what the local, um, the people on the ground did end up um, trying to resolve it. There was a meeting at the concert chamber in 1977 that was how that. The then Mayor Doug Ryan, Dove Meyer Robinson uh, chaired, that was attended by the members of the police department and uh, one David Longy lawyer uh, with the members of the community to try and resolve it. So at the local level, people did try to sort of meet together to try and sort of sort things out. But um, you know, the central government sort of, sort of um, did sort of provoke this sort of. Um, thing in the first place.